Ford. Oh, dude. You know what? Oh, what's up? I have an idea. Oh, Lord. Oh, yeah. You're going to do the thing, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Gonna You're not going to do the thing, are you? All right, man. Just hold on right there. I'll be right back. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. He's going to do the thing. Moments later. Check it out. Watch. Oh, God. Whew. Hey, didn't see you there. I'm Jason Hibbs from Bourbon Moth Woodworking, and um, I'm going to show you how I built this outfit table. Hey, dummy. What? You know, if you're going to do Bourbon Moth, uh, you know he doesn't have gauges anymore, right? I know. I mean, if you're going to be a pirate stealing people's stuff all the time, you might as well be authentic about it, you know what I mean? But I don't want to be a pirate. Anyway. Jason Hibbs from Bourbon Moth Woodworking here. And uh, again, I want to show you how about this outfeed table. It's the ultimate outfeed table. Now, I know a lot of people say their thing that they built is ultimate, and this is the ultimate, and that's the ultimate. And I guess, quite honestly, if everybody builds something that's the ultimate, then I guess there's really no such thing as the ultimate. Well, nonetheless, this is the ultimate outfit table. And I'm gonna show you how I built it. It's got everything you need in an outfit table from like a countertop, steel, pulls, adjustable feet, pocket holes, birch plywood, white maple, everything. And I'm gonna take you on the journey of how I built it. So follow along, comment down below, let me know what you like, what you don't like, and, uh, and maybe hit the subscribe button. All right, so let's go. Oh yeah, and um, drink AG1 and use Policy Genius and you know, all that stuff. Hey dude, don't we have a tin whistle? He's always playing a tin whistle. I need a tin whistle. Dude, stop saying tin whistle. In fact, can you just stop all of this nonsense, you freaking weirdo? <laughs> tin whistle. I mean, you have a daughter. What is she gonna think about you? Besides, I think the neighbors can see us. All right, so obviously I'm not Jason Hibbs from Bourbon Moth. I'm Christopher Garza from Oil City Woodworks. But I did buy the set of plans that you see me looking at here from Bourbon Moth. And he used the plans that he put together as well as his video that he released about the same table that he built in order to build this version. And I just wanted to make this video to show my process of how I went about building the table that he designed. And of course, you know, we watch these other YouTubers that are a lot more popular than I am. And we see them using expensive machines like domino joiners and other things like that. But I just wanted to show you that we can absolutely build the things they build with the tools that we have. So where he built his table out of solid white maple, I built mine out of primarily this birch plywood that you see me ripping down here. And I use pocket hole screws instead of dominoes. And it's just as strong, it's gonna look just as nice. And I just wanted to kind of show the process that I went through. So again, here you're seeing me using the cut list that he put together on his set of plans. I went out and bought a few sheets of this three quarter inch birch plywood and started the entire process by breaking it all down and I don't know if you caught it but I was struggling a little bit there with that first piece trying to run it through I end up turning my table saw around you'll see in the later parts of the video but here I am on the ground just again breaking down plywood according to the cut sheet and here's a good example of where I don't have a track saw but guess what I have a really good circular saw and a nice straight edge clamped it together and I was able to make these cross cuts and of course, before I get too far along in the process, I like to label every single piece that I'm cutting. Again, according to the cut sheet that were in the plans, I was able to label everything, check it off as I went along to make sure that I had all the pieces that I needed cut and none of them were gonna get mixed up and confused for any reason. All right, so again, he built his table out of solid maple. And so the runners at the top 
bottom and sides of the table that he built were solid maple that he milled down to three and a half inches by one inch. So what I did was took these three and a half inch strips of the three quarter inch plywood and essentially laminated them together. And so these are going to be my runners for the top, bottom and sides of the table. And you'll see me eventually resaw these on the table saw, which leaves me a little veneer that I'll end up using for another piece of the table. So again, three quarter inch laminated together obviously makes an inch and a half, not quite an inch and a half because obviously three quarter inch plywood is usually not exactly three quarter inches, but it actually works out perfectly for what I need later on. But again, these are the upper, lower and side stretchers for the table. And then for the legs, again, he used solid white maple. I'm going to laminate some legs using this birch plywood as the outside. So I get the same look as the white maple, but without the cost, because for me at the time that I built this table in the fall of last year, white maple was pretty expensive, but this white birch plywood from West Vice Hardwoods in Southeast Texas was really cheap. So I'll end up laminating these legs. I'll use a pine core. I end up just buying some construction grade lumber from one of the big box stores and making a two by two core. And I wrap these birch sheets around that core to basically make up a solid leg. And again, to glue these up, all I did was use the blue tape method and look at those joints. Pretty crispy as the kids say these days. So again, I measure the inside and it's about two and a sixteenth both ways. And the outside dimension of these legs is three and a half by three and a half. So here, what you're seeing me do is again, taking this construction grade lumber, which is just a couple of two by sixes that I again glued together and laminated because I'm going to end up ripping it and cutting it down to a two by two core that I'll use for the inside of the legs. And so these screws are really just to use as clamps because all of the clamps that I own are currently sitting there holding all of the stretchers together. So I glued up that two by six and while it was drying, these stretchers were done. So I went ahead and pulled them out of clamps. And then after a few hours, the glue on this beam that I put together was dry. I went ahead and removed all of the screws and you'll see me struggle with ripping this two by six, which again is a perfect example of why I need this out feed table. This uh, two by six glued to another two by six was pretty heavy. And by the time I get to the end of the cut, I end up really pushing down hard towards the end of this cut to make sure that the two by six didn't fall off the back of the saw. Of course, I had some Harbor Freight roller stands on the other end, but of course they got knocked over because this thing started leaning. And yeah, again, I need an out feed table. And like I said a minute ago, I ended up cutting, resawing, ripping this construction lumber down to where I ended up with a two inch by two inch square stock. So then I took it back over to the assembly table and I took the leg wraps and I wrapped it around the core just to see if it was a good fit or not. And as you can see here, it was a little thick regardless of which way I turned it, which one means that I did get a square piece of stock in there, but I need to plane it down because I definitely need to account for enough room for glue. And in some of my earlier videos, you'll remember if you've seen them, or if you're a subscriber and if you are, thank you very much. But you'll remember I had my planer on the ground and it was really inconvenient. So I built this little flip cart based on the one that Drew Fisher designed over on his YouTube channel, Fisher's Shop. And I'll put that link below. And it has made all the difference in the world. I was able to put my oscillating sander on one end and this DeWalt planer on the other end. and 
man, this flip top is just so nice. So anyway, here I am just taking a little bit by a little bit off of this square stock until I end up getting a really nice fit inside the leg. And while this was very time consuming and milling up hardwood maple would have been so much easier, so much less time consuming for me, time wasn't of the essence because I do have a day job and this is just a hobby for me. So for me, the most important thing was the cheaper materials. So again, just another example of how we can still build the furniture that some of the more popular woodworkers build, but we can build them our own way and it still looks just as nice and turns out just as functional. So again, here I am just kind of gluing up this entire leg assembly, slathered it with glue, taped it up and I set them all to the side to dry. And again, this took quite some time, but was a lot cheaper than using hard white maple. So once again, maxed out the use of all of the clamps in my shop to get these legs glued up. All right, and so as they were setting off to the side to dry, I took those stretchers that I had laminated earlier and just ran them through the jointer to kind of clean up that edge, you know, the glue squeeze out. And even though I cleaned the glue squeeze out off a little bit, the, it's still a little gnarly. So I ran them through the jointer just to clean them up. And then I came back later in the evening and the legs were all dry. Went ahead, took them out of clamps, and I really wanted to just get at least one of them out of the tape cut it to length just to see exactly how it turned out. And as you can see, it looks exactly like the hard white maple leg that Jason built on his channel, but it's three quarter inch birch plywood with a pine center. And man, look at those miters. All right, so the next morning, got back out into the shop and proceeded to cut all four legs down to size, got them out of the tape and then set those to the side and decided to go ahead and start milling up this two by six because I'm, you know, an ADHD type of woodworker. And I had forgotten to mill down the stretchers that are going to be the center of the table. And here you can see my nephew, JC, Jacob Christopher, helping me out in the shop. And I'm just cutting this two by six down to three and a half inches. And then I'll end up resawing it on the table saw to an inch thick. Now here are the stretchers that I had laminated the day before. And again, I'm just resawing these down to an inch thick, which again is per the plans that Jason had put together. And it kind of worked out because the little piece of veneer, birch veneer, that is left over from this resaw will come in handy when I realize that I forgot to make enough stretchers for the actual table. I only laminated enough for four stretchers when that only gives me enough for one at the top, one at the back, one on each side, and I need four more for the bottom. So kismet, I guess. All right, so here I am with the legs, just finding center on all four legs so that I can go ahead and drill in some adjustable feet. And I did this by first making a slight recess in the bottom of the leg to account for the thickness of that silver piece there. And then I'll end up using the center hole from the Forzner bit to drill a larger half inch hole all the way into the leg to account for the length of the adjustable feet that will screw into it. And of course I concentrated on trying to keep that as straight as possible so that the adjustable feet were not crooked inside of that hole, which would obviously throw off the leg just a little bit, but it all worked out. And I went ahead and mounted those in there with a few screws and that's pretty much it. And I guess I really didn't have to show you me driving in all three screws, but I did nonetheless. So there's two and there's three. And there you go. Got all four legs. 
And just like I forgot to laminate four extra stretchers, I forgot that I'm gonna end up needing two extra legs, but we'll get to that in a minute. So as you can see in this shot here, the beams closest to you, the viewer, I guess, if that makes sense, are the ones where I took that little birch veneer off of the other stretcher resaw and glued it to some pine to end up making the extra stretchers that I forgot to make earlier. So I basically left all of that stuff overnight to dry, came back the next morning and proceeded to put pocket holes in all of the stretchers to go ahead and build up the frame of the table. And again, this is where Jason used dominoes to build his frame. And after doing it with pocket holes, which by the way, is gonna be plenty strong and works just fine. I do feel like it's considerably a lot more time consuming than it would be if I had a domino, which I will end up buying a domino joiner at some point, just because for me, it makes sense and I want one. And that's a good enough reason, right? So I ended up making that little spacer that you see the stretcher resting on, which is going to give me a perfect three quarter inch reveal on the back end but it allows me to set the stretcher flat on the ground as well as the leg so that I can glue and screw them together. And I proceeded to do it this way until I got a couple of stretchers that I could stand up on their own. And I ended up putting all of these stretchers into the legs with the two and a half inch pocket hole screws from Craig. I could have probably used longer construction grade screws, but I do really like the pan head on the pocket hole screws as a clamping power, as opposed to a construction screw, which would try and drive through the end of that stretcher. And here you can see that little spacer that I had built so that I could get that nice three quarter inch reveal on the back end. And like I said earlier, I just made my way around until I had a couple of stretchers that I could stand up and ultimately connected them all using these Harbor Freight roller stands to kind of hold the other end of the stretcher because I also don't have super long pipe clamps like Jason had in his video. But again, you can make it work with whatever you have. And I put copious amounts of glue in all of those joints. Ran those long two and a half inch pocket hole screws in there. And I think it's gonna be just fine. But I ultimately end up putting a bunch more pocket hole screws in the side panels into the legs to just give it a little bit more holding power. But I think it'll be fine. So again, you don't need a domino joiner. You can do it this way too. I want one, but you don't need one. And then I came back later that night and I grabbed these one inch by three and a half inch stretchers. And again, he built his out of solid white maple, even these pieces that you'll never see. I just used the pine two by six that I resawed and ripped down to size, glued and pocket hole screwed it into the stretchers on the top and the bottom. And I guess the one advantage of not using the domino here is that uh, since it is screwed together, I don't have to clamp it and wait for it to dry. So give and take, you know what I mean? All right, so then after I had those stretchers installed, I was able to take these little three inch strips of plywood and mount those all the way around the inside of the bottom. And that is going to receive the three quarter inch panel that will ultimately be the bottom of the table. And just like in his video, he mentioned that these two pieces, these panels that you'll see in a minute, they're not necessary, but because you're going to have drawers in this table, it is nice to have a dust cover, if you will, to try and keep as much dust out of those drawers eventually. And I agreed with him. And so I went ahead and did the same thing. Now here's not one of my finer moments because you're seeing me struggle to put the bottom panel in through the top here and I got to push the side panel out and all this other stuff. And why didn't I just go through the front? There's plenty of room, you dummy. But anyway, 
I got both panels in, they fit perfectly, and they also help to square up the table. They just plop right in, they're nice flush with the top of the stretchers, and then of course I checked for square by running a tape measure across each corner. And of course, because I'm a master craftsman, it was perfectly square. And then I just ran a couple of 16 gauge finished nails into the panels just to hold it in place. All right, so I mentioned earlier that I forgot that I was gonna need two extra legs. Well, those are for the middle of the front and back. And so I just took, again, birch plywood and I'm gonna laminate it all together to make these legs. So before I laminate glue and then have to run dados through them to receive the stretchers like he did on his table, I went ahead and held them up to the stretcher, marked where they were, and you'll see me here using essentially scraps from the other lamination process to build out those legs around the stretchers. So again, time consuming, not very efficient, but I was able to utilize scrap wood, so no waste, and still cheaper than hard white maple for me. And when I say it was time consuming, it really was time consuming. But again, what else would I have to do? Just out in the shop, building furniture, making sawdust. It's a good day. So once I got all of the scrap pieces cut down to the size that I needed, same thing. Went through, I glued them all together and I used screws in lieu of clamps and it worked out just fine. But yeah, definitely not the most efficient way to make these legs. I'm just using some trim head screws to attach these just because that's what I had in that length. Now this screw here is gonna come back to bite me and you know what, because that is exactly where I need my adjustable feet to go. So on the front and back center support legs, I end up having to offset the adjustable feet because I left that stupid screw right there directly in the middle of the leg, but no worries. All right, so as you can see here on the side and the front of the legs, I have the birch plywood and again you're never going to see the back so I just left those as pine. I didn't go through the process of putting birch plywood on those because it wasn't necessary. So these are three and a half wide by three inch deep and again I built them to go around the stretchers and that's all I did. I put a copious amount of glue on them again, shoved them up against the stretcher and then I ran some long screws through the back stretcher all the way into the leg and you don't see me doing it but i end up getting on the ground and driving screws from the inside of the table towards the leg at the bottom as well if that makes sense and then i did the same thing on the back and like you can tell right there it looks just like a hard white maple leg even though it's all just plywood and pine and here i am just driving in those screws from the inside out because even though I think the glue would be fine I definitely want to make sure I have as much holding power as I can and since I have an entire drawer full of screws I might as well use them and like I said I ran two on each side of that stretcher at the top and did the same thing on the bottom but I had to crawl underneath the table to do that and then here I am later that evening or later one evening ripping down the panels that will separate essentially the front from the back of the table. And this is where I kind of deviated from the plans that Jason had put together because whereas he had four drawers on the front and two on one side and then the other side he basically had a solid panel because he has a dado saw set up and doesn't need or have access to those drawers, I went ahead and put two drawers on the other side as well. And you can see in this shot here that it's a little different from the table that he built in his video. So then I took those side panels and I marked where the stretchers were so that I could run pocket hole screws in those as well, which is what you see me doing here. 
and that was it. I just took the panels out, put a bunch of pocket hole screws in them so that I could put them back and attach them to the inside of the table. Pretty straightforward, yes, much cheaper than a domino. And quite honestly, this is exactly the type of stuff pocket hole screws were designed for. And then after I had all the pocket hole screws drilled out for the panels, I hopped back over to the table and I popped a chalk line from one side to the other, just to, again, give me a good straight reference on where I was gonna mount those panels. And then you can see here in this shot that I also have pocket hole screws drilled out on the top because again I am going to attach the MDF top to this table with pocket hole screws from the bottom just like Jason did in his video so that way if I ever wanted to remove the top which maybe I might want to I'll be able to do that so then I just went around of course drove in a bunch of screws to attach these panels checking for square to make sure these panels were square up and down because I will be mounting drawer slides to them and I definitely want to make sure that they are nice and straight and square. And I ended up putting a clamp on the back end of this panel because anybody who has worked with pocket hole screws knows that once you go to drive those screws in, the piece does want to move on you just a little bit. So I put that clamp behind the panel just to hold it firm. And then I used this other Craig clamp to hold the pocket hole in place. I at least drove the first screw. And then I went back around to the other side of those panels and I pre-drilled a couple of holes just so I wouldn't split the plywood that I was drilling into. And then I ran home a few screws and I didn't really worry about countersinking these even though I mean I did by way of sinking them home pretty deep but I didn't worry about countersinking them because they're going to be covered up by drawers and then I cut this little support piece for the middle stretcher installed that and then here you see me going around and drilling the pocket hole screws in the tops of the stretchers because I forgot to do that earlier and thankfully I have this little Craig Jig Mini or whatever you call that, uh, that allows me to do that. And in those shots there, you can tell that there are no pocket hole screws on the sides of those panels going into the leg, but I do end up going back off camera and adding those just for, again, additional strength. Then I went ahead and pirated these hold down clamps off of my cross cut sled. And because I don't have a track saw, but I really want one. In the meantime, I went ahead and bought this Craig AccuCut system. And I'm not gonna lie, for 90 bucks, cause it was on sale at one of the big box stores, this thing's pretty nice, pretty accurate if you set it up correctly. And uh, I used it to cut down these MDF panels, which will be the tabletop. So I cut them down to length, and then I was able to use one of them as sort of a interim tabletop if you will so that I could rip the other one down to width because right now you've got two 48 inch pieces of MDF which equals eight feet of course and the table is only seven feet wide so again I placed one of these panels down and I will use it as an interim tabletop while I rip six inches off of the other piece which is what you see me doing here And then once I got both sheets ripped down to size, I was able to put them down on top of the table just to make sure everything lined up correctly. And I don't think you can tell from this video, but one of the things I will note is that while in Jason's video, he actually cut the length of his tabletop pieces actually too short for the back end that butts up against the saw. I made note of that and I made sure to cut them the right length and I left them about two inches long on that back end. 
And again, this will be the end of this video because look, we're already at 30 minutes. And uh, as you can see, got a nice table. It looks pretty much exactly like Jason's, but instead of hard white maple, it's built out of birch plywood. And instead of dominoes, I use pocket screws. So again, different tools, different methods, pretty much the same output. Where does he play this thing? Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the video and join me for the next video. I've got another one coming up where I'm gonna talk about how I went through the process of making all of the drawers for the table and how I installed the Formica countertop. And since I've never made a video on how to build and install drawers, this will be my first. So hopefully you liked the video and uh, again, hopefully you've liked and subscribed and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot. Come on, man. You're killing me with this stuff. Can we just go, please? Again, the neighbors can see us.